This beach board is not perfect. Um, it has a leak in it, I think, somewhere. Um, it's susceptible to getting punctured and basically it doesn't work. On the other hand, here is an imaginary beach ball. Now this imaginary beach ball is perfect. The reason it's perfect is that it can't be punctured, it can't uh, leak, um, it doesn't need to be blown up, it's just here. And it's also perfectly spherical. St Anselm in the 11th century argued that if it was possible to perceive of a perfect being, one of the perfections of that being must be that it existed. Now, my perfect beach ball here is non-existent and therefore is perfect. If it existed, it would be imperfect. It would have leaks along these bits and that sort of thing. Okay, right. Now, that's one of the arguments that it's possible to conceive of something perfect and nevertheless it doesn't exist. That's the ontological argument for the existence of God that if you can perceive something as perfect then one of the perfections will be that it exists and therefore that God must exist because God is a perfect being. That's been refuted in that way. It's also been refuted in other more interesting ways because it sounds like quite a peculiar argument and one of those ways is by saying that existence is not a predicate. This speech ball has a number of predicates. It is made of plastic, that's a property it has. Uh, it has got a valve on one side, it is multicoloured, it's got a blue stripe down that bit or a blue sort of segment down that bit. Those are one of the pre some of the predicates of the beach ball. Um, one of my predicates is that I have long hair at the moment, uh, that I wear glasses and so forth. Now existence is not a predicate. Existence is said not to be a property of an object. So the property of existence being more perfect than the property of non-existence, which is in any case dubious because this beach ball is imperfect because it exists, is one of the reasons why uh, the ontological argument has been said to work. Now the ontological argument is good because it works so, because it's so defective that it's wrong for interesting reasons. The question of existence being a predicate is in itself interesting because, oh well, by the way this uh, beach ball being deflatable is obviously imperfect and that is another reason why it exists. Um, it has the property of uh, being deflatable. Now th there's another question, what counts as perfection? Uh, is perfection the uh, ability to be deflated quickly uh, and be inflated quickly or would there be some other measure, measure of perception like for example non-toxicity or would a perfect beach ball be perhaps perfectly toxic? Uh, because you know, <laughs> there it is. Um, it's not poisoned me. Um, on the other hand it's not edible. So should it be perfectly toxic? Perfectly edible. Anyway, um, yes, yeah, so existence not being a predicate. Now there is a problem with that because instantiation could be a pre predicate. For example, my children used to say, how, how, why is such and such real? So in other words, they were giving the quality of having reality. Um, that's how they were describing existence. So existence not being a predicate? I'm not sure. I mean clearly the ontological argument is complete rubbish. But it isn't really rubbish um, in the same way as um, the other arguments are because the, I mean, the cosmological and the design argument. Because what's interesting about the ontological argument is that it posits that existence as a predicate and therefore it's wrong for interesting reasons. Now you see, once again, this is the imperfect beach ball because it's not infinitely small now, um, even though it's been deflated, so it's not perfectly packable away and so forth. So basically, the ontological argument fails because it's possible to imagine a perfect beach ball here, uh, but this real beach ball is imperfect also because the quality of existing is not a quality. And so basically it fails, but it fails in a good way.